France has gotten a reputation as a military loser, which I think is deeply unfair. Although France has lost more wars than it's won over the last 300 years, to call the French military unskilled or cowardly is just not true. Over the last thousand years, France has consistently been one of the five best militaries on the planet. In fact, the reason France lost as much as it did was that it was so powerful that everyone around it teamed up so that France wouldn't take over the rest of Europe. However, this fate wasn't preordained. There were many battles where, if a few minutes had gone differently, France would be a world power. Trafalgar, the Plains of Abraham, Rossbach, Sedan, etc. In fact, France nearly took the jewel in Britain's crown, India. India was 70% of the British Empire's population, and before the British arrived was the wealthiest nation on Earth by certain metrics. India was the heartland of the British Empire in our timeline, supplying large amounts of wealth and manpower. So what would have happened if France had colonized India, not Britain? What would borders, culture, demographics, wars, and the world today be like? That is the question of this alternate history. In the mid-18th century, the British and French were in competition for control of eastern India. The British were stronger in the north, but still had a presence everywhere, with their main bases at Madras, Bombay, but primarily Calcutta. The French were stronger in the south, with their main base at Pondicherry. In our timeline, the British were able to roundly beat the French, driving them back to an enclave in Pondicherry, which they controlled until 1954, while the British took over the rest of India. The French could have taken over India if two battles had gone differently during the Seven Years' War, which is referred to as the French and Indian Wars in America and the Carnatic Wars in India. The first battle was the Battle of Wandiwash, fought between the British and French over southern India, in which the French actually slightly outnumbered the British, but still lost. If the French had been able to trounce the British in this battle, Madras and southern India would have become open to French conquest. The second was the Battle of Plassey, where the French allied Nawab of Bengal was trying to drive the British out of Bengal. The British were outnumbered 10 to 1 in this battle, but after the British smashed the Bengali, or really French artillery, followed by the Bengali leader leading a cavalry charge against the British where he was killed, and the Bengali army fell apart, thus allowing the British conquest of Bengal, the richest region in India, and probably one of the richest nations on earth. With Bengal, the British control of India was secured. In this timeline, the Bengalis used their enormous weight of numbers and crushed the British forces, driving the British out of Bengal and Calcutta, their main base. Having been removed from the eastern section of India would mean that the British would just surrender their holdings in India. The French would be practical suzerains of eastern India, with direct control over much of the south and Bengal run by their puppet. I don't see why this would affect the war's effects in North America or Europe. Those areas were months of travel away and being fought with barely even knowledge of what was going on in India. The amount of European troops in India was puny and so barely a drain on what was going on the other fronts. Prussia still maintains independence, and the British still take Middle America and Canada from the French. The American Revolution still happens. Having lost India, the British would have tried to extract even more taxes from the American colonies to pay back all their debts. This in turn would have alienated the American colonies and resulted in their rebellion. With the loss of the American colonies, Britain would be left with just Canada and the West Indies as their only colonies. This would still make them a fair-sized colonial empire, but would still be a bitter loss. We would see the French start to solidify their control over India. India was in an anarchy in this era, as the previously powerful Mughal Empire had fallen apart and thus leading to a power vacuum, which resulted in bandits, barbarian invaders, warlords, and the like, dominating much of the land. The British were able to use this anarchy to gradually gain control of the whole subcontinent. To protect their trade networks, the Europeans had to expand their militaries outwards, which eventually led to outright conquest. Drill gave the Europeans an enormous military advantage over the native kingdoms, which meant they almost always won the battles. Over the next century or so, we would see the French conquer the whole Indian subcontinent, alongside territories like Burma and Ceylon, similarly to the British. India was fabulously wealthy in this era, at least by certain metrics. The British took large amounts of this wealth back to Britain. 
So much, in fact, that the word loot in English actually comes from Hindi, and Clive, the lead head honcho in British India, was the wealthiest man in Europe when he returned to England. The French would likely do the exact same thing as most conquerors of India, whether Turkish, Afghan, Mongol, or Persian have done. The French Revolution would never have happened in this timeline. The primary reason for the French Revolution was that the French government ran out of funds due to its various wars. The French Compagnie des Andes was primarily a governmental affair, meaning that a fair amount of its funds would flow into the French government's coffer, thus giving the French l'ancien régime enough money to keep going. Also, India would be a valve to discharge all the discontents that didn't like life in France. We run into the sticky question of whether the British colonization of India resulted or affected in British industrialization. In general, I'm pretty wary of correlating empire with wealth. Just look at the Spanish, Turks, and Russians, who had huge colonial empires to exploit, but were economically quite primitive. Alternatively, look at Belgium, Denmark, or Germany, who industrialized with completely unimportant colonial empires or industrialized before they had colonial empires at all. However, I'm betting the colonization of India would have some effect. Both France and Britain reinvested their colonial incomes in improving their societies rather than spending on superfluous luxuries for the elite like most colonial empires. The French merchants and government would invest the Indian revenues in industrializing France. French ports on the Atlantic like Nantes, Rouen, and Bordeaux would become very important. French coastal regions like especially Normandy and the Lower Loire would balloon industrially. Don't get me wrong, Britain would still be an industrial superpower. Britain had numerous advantages over France in developing an industrial economy, whether Britain's nearly total literacy versus France's 20%, Britain's stock market, parliamentary system, more fluid social system, or agricultural revolution. Britain would still likely be more industrialized than France, but the gap would be smaller. Without the French Revolution, it would be interesting to see what direction French politics would take. Firstly, France would likely liberalize to a certain extent at some point. As the French middle class would grow due to industrialization, or people with big picture political opinions, France would be forced to liberalize. It would likely be similar to the Kaiser's Germany, in that the crown would maintain large power, but there would be a limited parliament. Without the Napoleonic Wars, history would have gone off in a very different direction. First of all, the Napoleonic conquest of Germany ignited German nationalism and woke up Prussia from its slumber. Due to the humiliation, Prussia geared up its military and eventually united Germany. I am betting Germany would still unify, as industrialization would create a sense of German unity in the same way as Italy did. I am betting Prussia would still be the one in charge, since Austria was like the sleepy cat of political powers. However, it could have taken on very different results. Perhaps Germany would have been more of a loose federation, similar to Canada, where the different regions were given a greater degree of autonomy. I have read that the Prussian unification was very important for German culture, and that without it, Germany would be a very different nation. Prussia made Germany more into a militarized and standardized nation. Meanwhile, a nation run by the Rhinelanders would act more like Switzerland, Belgium, or the Netherlands. Probably the biggest political effect of the Napoleonic Wars was the breakup of the Spanish Empire. In our timeline, the Spaniards were trying to liberalize their empire before it finally collapsed, giving the Creoles, or native white population, more rights and privileges. Since the fall of the Spanish Empire, Latin America has faced a crisis of leadership, with the Spanish complete centralization of power, meaning there was no power structure to replace them. And so in this timeline, without the French invasion of Spain, the natives wouldn't be able to muster a powerful enough rebellion to kick out the Spanish. And this would mean the Spanish Empire would survive in the New World with giving greater and greater autonomy to the white Creole population. The United States would completely wreck the inefficient and decayed Spanish Empire, likely seizing Cuba and the American Southwest from it. It seems likely that the U.S. would have invaded Mexico like they did in our timeline and installed an independent regime in Mexico. With all their money from their Indian domains, it seems likely the French would continue to wage wars of conquest like they've been doing for 150 years. In our timeline, Napoleon unleashed the full potential of the French nation by using conscription, patriotism, and meritocracy, all of which would have been terrifying for the l'ancien régime, and so it seems likely that similarly to before, the European balance of power would contain France. In our timeline, the British held a huge advantage over the French with their navy. The reasons for this were partly due to geography and partly due to politics. 
Firstly, Britain as an island so didn't need to build a huge army in the same way France did, and thus focused mostly in their navy. France also has the issue of having to maintain both the Mediterranean and Atlantic fleet simultaneously. Secondly, the French government wanted to take over continental Europe, and thus had little interest in naval or colonial affairs, with one important official once saying, why would you save the stable when the house is burning down? This would change in this timeline with the enormous amount of money coming in from India, thus meaning France would invest in a stronger navy to support their cash cow. However, Britain would still have the advantages above. Thus, France would be in a stronger position, but still inferior to Britain in naval power. With control of India and based out of the ports in the Mediterranean in France, the French start to leer at Egypt to link the two of them. The French conquer Egypt in the 19th century and build the Suez Canal, like they tried to in our timeline. They would also seize the regions like Yemen, Oman, and Somaliland that the British did in our timeline that were vital for controlling the route to India. With the French in such a strong position in the Indian Ocean, the British would try to seize more colonies to counterbalance them. It seems likely that the British would find some opportunity to backstab their allies the Dutch and seize their important colonies like South Africa, the Straits of Malacca, and possibly even Indonesia. Similarly, they would likely poach the Philippines off the Spanish Empire. With their center of power based around the South China Sea, it seems likely that the British would seize Indochina at the imperial high point of the late 19th century. The French wanted to colonize Australia in our timeline during the Napoleonic Wars, but had no naval ability to do so. In this world, the French split Australia east-west across the central desert, with the British with their better navy taking the more fertile eastern half. This would undoubtedly result in incredible advancement for this timeline's Australian cuisine. With France as the, probably the predominant Mediterranean naval power, or close to it, they would likely do bad things to Italian unification in order to not jeopardize their route to India. In this timeline, France detaches at least Sicily into an independent puppet state, but could also possibly keep southern Italy as an independent country from the north, which it basically already is in every manner except political. When technology would allow the scramble for Africa, we would likely see a pattern where the French based out of Algeria and Egypt, would take over much of the northern part of the continent. And before you get all shocked at how big this is and call this a wank video, remember, most of this is desert. The British coming from the Cape would seize much of the south and east of the continent. The Opium Wars are one of those face palm moments in history when you're like, come on, did you really nuke a 4,000-year-old civilization over selling them hard drugs? Do you have any honor? The main thing that allowed it was the East India Company being a joint stock company, driven purely off profit. However, the French Compagnie des Andes was mostly government run and thus less innovative, but also less susceptible to greed like this. There would be no opium wars in this timeline. The opium wars caused a ripple effect in China, resulting in what they called the Century of Humiliation, ending with the Japanese invasion of World War II, but involved civil wars, plagues, foreign invasions, end of the dynasty, and complete shift in Chinese civilization. As Europe's technological advantage over the rest of the world grew so huge in the late 19th century, they would likely try to find a different way to exploit China, but I don't know how. A huge reason Japan industrialized when it did was they saw what happened to China when China tried to resist the West. With China's humiliation likely delayed by several decades, this means Japan's industrialization would either have never happened or would have happened several decades later. This would be too late, as they would be too weak as Russia would become the dominant power in the Far East around the turn of the 20th century, turning Japan and Korea into client states alongside effectively annexing Manchuria and Mongolia. With a less militaristic Germany and no Japan, Russia would be the main threat to the world system. Britain and France would align against Russia to protect China and the Ottoman Empires from Russian influence. A major war would likely break out due to this, possibly resulting in a Russian invasion of India, which has legit been alternate history bingo for me. The big factors are how industrial and militarized Germany and Japan are. If the war would be fought mostly over colonial possessions between the British, French, and Russians, the US likely never get involved. We've sort of danced around what kind of country India would become. This would be determined by French versus British colonial rule. The two were fairly different, with the British's attitude being, do whatever you want, just pay your taxes, but there's no way in hell you're getting into our country club. The French was, your native beliefs annoy us, but if you do exactly what we say, you can be Frenchmen. The British let the natives run themselves to a large extent, while the French made schools and hospitals. In reality, the two didn't produce results that different. 
Sudan isn't significantly better off than Chad and Vietnam than India. Britain had a very clear advantage with white settler societies, but with colonies of color it vanished. The British had all the posing about importing capitalism, and that was true for the white elite, but whatever the native populations made industries that would compete with the British, they were crushed in one way or another. The British, if anything, helped introduce India's odious bureaucracy. That's one of the big things slowing down India's growth. But you can't talk about bureaucracy without bringing up the French, who legit invented the word and have perfected it. There are two main pertinent differences, however. The French really didn't give up having their colonial empire in a lot of different ways, which is why France is currently fighting four to five wars in Africa as we speak. The second was that Britain endowed most of its colonies with democracy. Being an ex-British colony and being a democracy is a pretty high correlation, and the number of democracies in the former French empire is tiny. India, if not a democracy, which seems remarkably likely if France colonized it, would be in worse shape more along the lines of some of the neighboring countries that I choose not to mention. Democracy allows stable property rights and governmental accountability, which are the most important things in economic growth. Ever since India has become a multi-party political system, its economic growth has gone up radically. A non-democratic India would be more along the lines of Pakistan or Burma. What a feltist, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Please check out my Patreon as well, which has got the first chapter of my History of the World as well as lots of cool maps. I will be hosting a Q&A session at this Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so if you're interested in that, please check in. As always, thank you very much and have a good day.